This morning we are in this place to pray. And we are here to pray for families. If you belong to family, let me see your hand up. You belong to a family. I thank God that all of us raise up our hands. This morning, my, my message is funny because it says, Lord, help me and my family should not be stuck. If you get your Bible where you are, can you open your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 2, verse 1 to 3? It's Anonymous 2, 1 to 3 says, Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord directed me, and for many days we journeyed around Monsia. And the Lord spake to me, Moses, saying, You have roamed about around or you have roamed around this mountain country long enough turn northward i want you to get five people and tell them it is time to turn it is time to turn it is time to turn i prophesy to your life it is time to turn choir you can please have your seat for a while i will need you back on this mountain just go back today and get the anointing i will need you back just just you can please quickly have your seat you can please have your seat this morning i have to do our assignment but before i do my assignment amen to jesus i want you to put your hands together dr lucky in the house hallelujah <laughs> praise the lord he's a man of god i respect so much for his passion for evangelism. He's the one that told me, Pastor, we can take Nottingham. I can't forget that. Well, God bless you. Put your hands together. Dr. Fagba Miro is in the house. Fagba Miro is in the house. Put your hands together for him. He's, he's, he's another gentleman that is looking younger every day. Don't get deceived by his face. He has to. He's after to. Amen to Jesus. And when I saw him this morning, I said, this young man, he said, I'm not young. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's not to have us around in Jesus' name. This morning, quickly go to my assignment. God have a plan for us and for our family. I said this morning that when God wants to speak to a nation, it will start by speaking to the families. And thank God we've started from Sunday school this morning talking about families. And I want to say to you this morning that family is a unit. When Israel was coming, was going into the wilderness, or sorry, when they were going into the slavery, they went as a family. It was just a family of 12 that went into slavery. And the Lord start multiplying them and they move to the nation. I want to say to you church this morning that the will of God for your family is to become a nation. Can I get an amen to that? God does not intend it for your family to be small. God plan for your family is you become a nation. And I have Something in my spirit this morning that says, Samuel, you are not called out to be small. I don't know about you. I am called out to be a nation. We have a picture of family that we see on the TV where you have, uh, I remember those days in Nigeria when you have an hambi that talks about God bless my family and you see the husband and the wife with a Lamborghini car in front of the house and they have two kids. But God's intention for family is more than that. For the record, the revolution that is going to happen, the revival that is going to happen is going to come from families. And that's why devil will do everything to work against family. But I have a word for a family in this place. That you have dwelt long in that situation. The Lord is going to call his turn around in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
But after many years, the family of God went into slavery. And slavery could be very, very disastrous. Slavery is not necessarily means that you have chains in your hand. It could mean a condition. It could mean a situation. And these children, called the children of Israel, were in slavery for 400 years. Generation upon generations were reporting to a attack master. Until one day, the spirit of the Lord came upon the prophet and he said, you are moving around the same situation for too long. It is time to go forward. Hallelujah to Jesus. I want to say this morning that freedom is a tax to pursue. If you want to be free, if you want to pursue destiny, it's not an accident. Every man that is born, you are born first into slavery. The Bible says, before you were born from your mother's womb, you were born into sin. And that is why giving your life to Christ is an effort. That's why it's a choice. You, used, you need to choose to be saved. And the same thing applies to you this morning. Your family, freedom is a walk. You have to walk and deliberately walk towards freedom. I'm going somewhere with this message this morning. You have to be determined in your heart that I want to be free. You have to determine in your heart that I want to break the cycle and the norms that trend in my family. My challenge to you this morning, if, if you are fighting the same issue five years ago, you're not moving forward. Life is in progress. God did not guarantee you that you're not going to face battle. But I refuse to face the same battle over and over again. Are you there with me? But this morning, I want to find quickly mention three things that stop people from moving forward. Three things quickly. Because I, I told you we're going to pray. Or three questions that you need to ask yourself in order to move forward. The first thing I found out is that many of us, the past is having enough of our attention. You're giving too much attention and too much energy to your past. Listen, the Bible says, if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are now new. The more you give your energy to your past, the more you distract yourself from your future. I also found out that past served the energy for your future. What has happened in the past? This is what has happened in the past. Many of us, what we do is that we chew back our past. And that was the same thing that happened to the children of Israel. They lost their past because they focused on their past. Every time there is a problem, they will tell Moses, can you please take us back? I want to beg somebody this morning, your past is gone. I'm not hearing an amen to that. The only thing you have now is the present. There's nothing you can do about your past. The failure of the past. The disappointment of the past. You did that exam, it doesn't work, it's gone. That boyfriend that left you. That jilting guy that's gone. It's your past. That mistake that you made is your past. When I was preparing this message, I said to myself, anytime the enemy reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Anytime devil knocking door 
and remind you of the guilt of the past. Remind him that he has a future and is in the lake of fire. There's nothing you want to do about your past. Past, sorry. There was an illustration that I saw on the internet. You know when you have a dog and something is wrong. Have you seen dog that is trying to chase their tail before? They go like this. Have you seen that before? That's exactly what many of us does. Instead of moving forward, we keep chasing our tail. But let me tell you something. No matter how much you try to chase your tail, you can't change it. So the children of Israel were stuck in destiny of life because the only thing they do is to chase the past. The past ought. This is how you know if you are still dwelling in the past. How sensitive are you? Many of us, a little things, you're hungry. A little things, you withdraw. The reason why you're doing that is because anytime you try to relay with people, you remind yourself of how you did it in 2003 and it didn't work. You're still dwelling on the past. But I have a word for you this morning. God Lord said, I'm going to do a new thing. Stop dwelling in your past. But because I want us to pray quickly, I want us to go. For you to move forward, you must determine who is going to take a lead. In the Thessalonians that we read, the Bible says, the Lord told Moses, tell the children of Israel. What I found out is this. Life will respond to leadership. You want to move? You want to move your family? Somebody must take a lead. Quickly before I go, somebody is thinking, well, I'm not married, so that that message is not really for me. But I want to tell you something. Everybody in this room, you are a family. The only difference now is that you are a family unit one. You have to determine to lead yourself. And quickly, let me digress and quickly go to the family for many of us that were here. Can I have men in this house? Men, shout hallelujah to Jesus. You need to determine to lead your family. Moses said to the children of Israel, the Lord said to us, it is time to move. Your master said, leadership is influence. Leadership is influence. The degree of influence that you have. I found out any family that does not have a leader is going to a chaos. Somebody in that family has to take a lead. 80% of the time he has to be the man. But sometimes, because we have many family structures, we have family structures that are single women, single, mom, single men, but in that family, somebody must take the lead. How do I know? The Bible says in, in, in the Old Testament when the angel of death wanted to come and kill in, in, in the land of Egypt. What did the Bible say? The Bible says, tell all the children of Israel and ask the elder of the family to kill a lamb. I said, tell them to put the blood on the wall. So when I come with the angel of destruction, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Many of us, we call that scripture very well. Am I right? We say, when I see the blood, I will call you. But we, you miss the first thing. Somebody must take the blood to the door. Somebody must wake up in the middle of the night and say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. That is when, when the angels will come, he will fly. But what you've been doing all this while is you've been waiting for one pastor to plead the blood for you. You have to take leadership. The way the world is going now, you have to take leadership. The world is going so bad now that the children want to do anything they want to do. I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. Not in my own family. 
Somebody is leading here. And it's me. You have to take leadership in the place of prayer. I used to, when I, the first time I, I attend church in Lobro, and the Pastor Ladu was saying, what, was the, what are the qualities of a man? And everybody was saying a lot of things. And I raised up my hand because I mean, if you see me there, you will not even believe I'm married. I was like, like Dr. Busayo, that I can come in and then just, you know, just demystifying the midst of everybody. Nobody knows him. And I said, what makes you a man is not you come home every day and say, in this house, I'm the father of this place. I said, the day you say that, you are no more the father of that house. The day I come to this church, I say to you, say you do not know I'm your pastor, I'm no more your pastor. I've lost it. So what makes you a leader and not a father is the capacity that you have in the spirit of that family. Moses said, the Lord said to me, let us move. In your family, somebody needs to take the lead. Can I get men in this place? Somebody needs to fight the battles on the knees. Unless, what you will discover is your family will just be moving around, around the circle. Somebody needs to make up their mind. This has to stop. This cycle has to break. Somebody must pay the price. I'm talking about leadership this morning. So Moses said to the children of Israel, it's time to move. Thank God there was a Moses. Look at your neighbor and say, your own family is waiting for your own Moses. Look at your neighbor and say, your family is waiting. You see, you, you, the problem is this. We've been waiting for an outside deliverer. We've been waiting for somebody to deliver us. But I have a news for somebody. Your deliverance is in your house. Somebody needs to take the lead. Somebody needs to say, God says the Lord. Let me say that again. You know, hear me. In that family, somebody needs to say, God says the Lord. If somebody is not saying it, what will happen to that family is, is no direction. Look at what God told about Abraham. He said, I am proud of Abraham. Why? Is it because he will teach his family the will of the Lord? He said, Don't worry about Abraham. Don't worry about him. I am so sure about this man because he will teach his family the will of the Lord. Can God say that to you? Either you are married or you are not married, there's a family loins in your belt. Look at your beards. I say there's a family in loins here. There's a family. There's a family. There's a family. And God is waiting on you. Let me say that. I feel like repeating that statement. In that family, let me make this personal. In Bro Victor's family, somebody must say, "Does says the Lord." Do you understand that, Church? Do you understand that? Do you understand that here in this place? Do you understand that? If you don't remember nothing in my message, remember that. If somebody does not say, does says the Lord, what I mean is that somebody must be a point where God speaks through that family. Are you listening to me? Somebody must be the antenna that receives from that family. Unless the family will be stuck in moving around and around and around. There's time to move. There's time to wait. There's time to wait. There's time not to talk. There's time to fight. There's time to withdraw. See, the battle of this world is a battle to the family. But I want family to rise up in this church. I said, I am going to stand at the gate to command the instruction to my family. Because somebody in that your family must say those years if as I'm talking now, there's nobody that is saying it in your family, why can't you raise up and say, God, use me. Let it be me this morning. Let, me just, let it just be me. Let it just be me. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. The last one because before we start praying. Because I want you to pray. Don't forget the first one. Don't dwell too much on past. The second one, somebody needs to take the lead. Are you there with me? The last one. Obeying God sometimes might sound crazy. Obeying God sometimes might sound crazy. Because the problem most of the time is that we are used to our trouble. Let me give you a, let me give you an, a, a very funny joke. A man came to my a woman came to my to my friend pastor's church with a sick child. And then the pastor now said, Ah, that's good. God bless your family. We'll be praying for your child. Now, this is a joke, but it's reality. It's actually very funny. I know many of us in this room won't do that. And then the second Sunday, the woman stopped coming to church. The third Sunday, the woman stopped coming to church. So the pastor now called a friend of that lady and said, Why is it that she's not coming to church? And then the lady said, Ah, because the pastor said she wants to pray to heal my child. If they heal my child, where will I be getting the benefit from the government? Praise God. So she preferred the child to be sick than being healed. See, many of us, that's the way we react. And how do I know? How do I know? You will say now, the way I just said, you say, no, pastor, that's not me. How desperate are you for change? That's how you know. When you see people coming to come and, to the place of prayer to come and pray, we, we had a meeting yesterday and Branson was saying something about having a prayer meeting where somebody, people just come and pour their heart for change. You see, that's a man that will change. That knows that the only source of my change is God. In my language, they will say, eh, but keke, keke, long, boro, kun, that means small, 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 small juju. Oh, how do I say it in English? Sacrifice, thank you. He's the one that saves people. You will see people that won't change when it is time to pray the way they pray. When you see people that won't change, that want the direction for their life. Listen, destiny is not going to be bad by eating ice cream. Ask great men, they will tell you. Greatness is a cost to be paid. You want to be great. You are here because you passed some exams. Am I right? The reason why you are in this church now that I'm talking to you, Alfred, is because you passed some exam. The next level that you are going to, you have to pass some exam also. So get yourself ready for a desperation of passing exams because that's the direction of life. And do you know the funny thing about this work of a lifetime, this exam? Unfortunately, you are the only one that will mark it yourself. You need to determine in your heart. Look at the time. When, when the Lord gave them, I said, let us turn on what? Imagine the children of Israel said, we don't want to. How desperate are you for change? This is also how you will know how desperate you are for change. What are you focusing on? You see, many of us, when, we, when I talk to people and I see the, their expectation of life, even sometimes everyone is shocked. If, if God gave some of us now, as I'm sitting down, a blank check and say, fill this blank check any amount we want, many of us will feel less money because we will think that God will go bankrupt. Let me try and fill 1,000 pounds. Maybe God will not have mon- enough money. You are saying, Pastor, I won't do that. But that's the way you react when you come to come and pray. That's the way you react when it's time for when it's time to pour out your heart. I will soon see those people now when it's time to pray. Because prayer is the only open check that you have to God. The Bible says, Bring your request unto me. So the only open check you have this morning is this prayer. I will see how many of us will do it. You will soon see. Some of us will pocket like this and say, God, 
I, if you, if what will be, will be. Listen, you need to fight some things on your knees. What will be, will not be. Have you read your, the Bible very well? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. See, what will be, some of us have to bring it down. Bring the kingdom come of God down. I refuse to re- be moving around the same. I refuse a normal life. I refuse it. You have to make up your mind. It's a choice this morning. So I'm going to lead us in four major prayer. Four fire prayer you're going to pray. Look at them and say four fire prayer. As in you're really going to pray those prayers. The reason I'm going to pray that prayer is because I was telling the minister yesterday. I said, this church, we are full of young families. Amen? Young families. Many of us that we are here, our children are just like one, two, three, four, except our grandmas that have us as their children. Amen? But 80% of us here, we are young families. See, struggling and hustling for Listen, if you make any mistake now, you're doomed. I can't afford to make mistake now. Are you there with me? There's some things that age can only correct. There's some things that time can only correct. So that's why my desperation for change is high. Are you listening to me this morning? I have a very high expectation for my family. I was discussing what Dr. Bukhi were talking about. I said, do you know even in this, school, in this country, there are levels. Amen to you. There are levels in this country. Sure you know. That's why the fact that education is free. It's not actually not free. There are levels. I have high expectation for myself. So this morning, I'm going to lead us to pray. I just said that because really, to be fair, the only thing I have this morning is to turn you not what. But when I was praying, I just said, okay, let me, let, let's talk about what, what really makes people not to turn. Number one, stop dwelling on the past. God is going to do a new thing. Number two, let somebody in that family take a lead. The problem we have in our generation is that there are no more leaders. We don't have leaders again. Even in the church. We don't have leaders. Even in the family. We don't have... Children can do whatever they want to do. But I refuse not in my own home. Amen to Jesus. God had those days. I remember. I remember. I, and that's why. Thank God for women that brought some of us up. I remember those days. The first time I went to go and play football outside. Because when we were growing up, my mom is there. Thank God for her life. We're going to put your hands together for my mother. We, 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 I, w- I wanted to go and play football and I didn't know she was not because in those days when we were growing up all the game and all the play you will play is in the room they don't bore your mother to come out so I sneak out of the house to go and play football on the field and lo and behold here is it behind me oh my god my mother will use her barra to finish <laughs> I cry my life at as if I've already done something horrible. We still need leaders in our life. Born of corrections. Don't lose that in your family. If you lose it in your family because your, your children are British, you're gone. And by, before you see it now, you see them misbehaving. We need leaders. Even in church, we need leaders. Do you know what my tomorrow said? Leave your compound unattended to. What will grow on it? Weed. Leave your garden unattended to. You have flowers everywhere. Just leave it for one month or two months. What will grow on it? Weeds. Somebody have to wake up and cut the grasses. Somebody have to cultivate the grasses. That somebody is you. Somebody needs to bring discipline. And back to your own life. You need to bring discipline to your life. Life success is for people that have discipline. 
Can we rise up on our feet this morning? The next 20 minutes is going to be for prayer. And after that one, I'm just going to ask us to go. And we're going to go home. Choir, please help me. I want to sing the God of Elijah, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah, the man of war, his mercies endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his soul. Oh, 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 oh,